Hey, what's up, everyone? I'm Jeff Gersman. Welcome to GiantBomb.com's Reviews. Are we doing a podcast form here? And today I'm joined by Brad Shoemaker. Hello. How are you doing? I'm well. Great. Uh, you have played Hitman 2. I have. A lot of it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the, the sequel to 2016's Hitman. That's right. Giant Bomb's Game of the Year yes. that year. Yes. Um, so this is... Uh, more Hitman. Yeah. Uh, not, you know, like that, that it seems like there's... I have written here in my notes very much more Hitman at its core, but who's complaining? Sure. <laughs> that's kind uh, of the long and the short of it. That's a delicate thing. I think, uh, yeah. you know, there, there are definitely games that you can kind of see as more of the same in a negative way. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, in, the, in this case, it's kind of a, uh, a thing of don't mess with perfection, although nothing is technically perfect. Sure. Yeah. But they dialed in that core formula in the first game mm -hmm. in a way that you wouldn't want them to mess with too much. Do you think it's something that, you know, around the, just the, the nature of the, or, or the game structure, like it's very much like, here's a menu full of locations and you kind of want to get into those multiple times. Like, yeah. the, does that kind of help with the idea of like, hey, there are more locations Yeah, and it's still kind of the the same core or similar, very similar core? Yeah. I mean, the game lives and dies by the quality of its content. Right. I mean, you've got... I mean, for people that play the game, it's it is a stealth action game, but I think these games are almost as much adventure games as they are stealth mm. action because there are, in a sense, inventory puzzles. There are characters running around doing routines. Right. There are little stories that storylines that play out right in front of you that you can get in there and toy with. You know what I mean? Right. Like yeah. the yes, there is this engine. You know, there's this core set of mechanics of, like, you can throw, you can target people's heads and throw blunt objects at them. You can take off their clothes and put them on as dis disguises. Mm -hmm. But that stuff is only good insofar as the scenarios that they give you to apply those mechanics to right. are good. Uh, yeah. And there's a whole bunch of those here that are great. So, okay. It's, it's so, a good sequel. And, and, and mechanically, though, there are differences. You know, yes. foliage being kind of the, one of the, the yeah, early it's, ones it's, that's it's, been called out. It's like a weird thing, but like, hey, it's got foliage now, yeah. but like uh, stealth friendly foliage. Yes. Um, yeah, hiding, hiding in knee high grass mm -hmm. may be the best new thing in this game. <laughs> and it plays, it plays to the game's strengths not only in that it's a new stealth tool right. in the toolbox, but it's also a way to completely obliterate the realism of the game mm. because you're walking into areas with eight people standing around looking right at you ducking into tall grass all of a sudden those people immediately forget you that you're there right and then you kill somebody yeah and everybody's like where what, what happened who yeah. did that does that i mean like, th that seems like the the core of this like on paper i think you know if i had never played hitman before and you described that to me i'd be like man that sounds terrible but it's so good but it feels like the rules of the like the very specific rules that hitman uses for all of its systems are part of what makes yes. it so much fun that is why the game works yeah. because it is it knows it's a video game it doesn't even make any pretense of like really simulating reality it's yeah. it's it's a clockwork toy mm -hmm. you know there's hundreds of characters walking around doing the things they are programmed to do yeah you quickly, by playing the game, by playing the maps over and over, you quickly learn what they do and don't pay attention to. Okay. And you yeah. learn to exploit that very quickly. Yeah. And that just becomes part of the game. Mm -hmm. Like, knowing, like, it's it's a hard thing to describe unless you really get in there and play it, but, like, you know when you commit a crime if somebody's going to get mad about it, if they're going to remember who you are, if you can change clothes and be fine after, you know what oh, I mean? Yeah, yeah. There's a whole list of things that you know that you can and can't get away with, and mm -hmm. you just learn to use those like as, as part of your toolbox. And it seems like the state of the world is maybe more clearly conveyed yeah. uh, here. Yes, that is a huge improvement here is that, you know, the first game, like the, the information was there, but it was pretty subtly indicated. Mm -hmm. uh, and this and, is stuff like, oh, are you trespassing? Yes, yes or yes, no? There are areas are of maps that you are not allowed to be in based on what disguise you're wearing. Mm -hmm. uh, there are cases where the disguise you're wearing has been compromised because you did something bad and somebody saw you. Uh, so all that stuff, if you're trespassing, if you're compromised, who Unconscious knows? Unconscious witness. Yes. yes. Uh, like it, it just, there are bigger, more colorful, more descriptive call outs for all those concepts. Mm -hmm. And that even extends to like top level progress in each map. You know, you had what were called, I think they were called opportunities in the first game. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Like there are challenges, there are feats, there are discoveries, and then there are opportunities, at least in the, in the first game's vernacular. Yeah. And that stuff just ran together. So like the opportunities have been renamed mission stories, which 
much more clearly conveys what they actually are. Like yeah. that's an example. So like a uh, mission story is like that's the thing you can you can track and it'll kind of walk you yeah. through those those some effectively of that stuff, those right? effectively are the kind of scripted story heavy kills. Mm-hmm. You know every every target in every map has got you know, three to five of them, let's say. Yeah. And there's nothing are... stopping you in, in a lot of cases from just like running up on a target, shooting them in the oh, head, yeah, yeah. everyone in full view of everyone, mm-hmm. and then trying to escape. Yeah, and, and it even and... incorporates those more basic types of kills into the challenge system. You know, you get XP, you get progression out of just about every way that you can kill somebody. Yeah. Uh, but the mission stories are the more elaborate, bespoke, okay, kind of scripted kills that they have set up in a very elaborate way that yeah. you know, require a lot of steps and specific like you need disguises. to get this item you yes. need to find this you need to present this to this person I, like they, that sort they, of stuff. in a lot of ways they end up being the most satisfying ways to carry out the assassinations because mm-hmm. they're big and grandiose and stupid yeah um, and take a lot of work to set up uh but you are you are empowered to get as creative as you want and just forget that stuff and just do it however right and even you know you can it seems like you can happen into those mission stories without necessarily turning on the tracking like that that's it yes. seems like a valid way to play of just yeah. like oh i figured this out I, th- I think it's to the game's credit that the more i have played hitman and let's say gotten more proficient at it the more yeah. i have thought about turning off a lot of those assists yeah and actually wanting to dig in on my own in that way i definitely like uh, in in the time i've spent with it it seems like yeah you you, you definitely happen upon like things go like, oh wait, I bet this is yeah. used with this. Like you know, as you as you run around the map and see the different pieces of it, you see the missing piece of like, oh yeah, I bet if I use that here with this with this, it'll set up this. This Game's got a high learning curve, but it's a gradual one mm-hmm. or a high skill ceiling, I guess I would say. But like you are absorbing tons of abstract concepts as you play more and more of this game, and yeah. yeah, you start seeing those connections and those possibilities, and like that's that's what's so fun about it. It's just a massive clockwork sandbox, and you can just kind of go to town, yeah, coming up with with goofy solutions to problems. How do you feel the game does uh, Hitman Two if it's any different uh, from kind of showing you the ropes, the tutorial? Uh, yeah, so well, I I have to kind of get ahead of you here to fully explain that because uh, maybe the best thing about this game is that. You can play all of Hitman One in Hitman Two, right? So they've this. I don't know what this says about the state of the business these days, but this feels incredibly generous to me. That <laughs> if you own Hitman One, uh, by the mere fact of buying Hitman Two, you can bring all of that first game's content into this game with the engine improvements, like they say, better graphics. I mean, that's that's yeah. splitting hairs, but the foliage, the uh, there's a briefcase, there's a bunch of you know the little tweaks, the better yeah. the better UI, like all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, this game now houses the content from both games with all that stuff applied. The reason I bring that up is that along with all that content is the, the pretty pretty lengthy tutorial from the first game. You're right, right. Um, but even that gets gets the foliage and stuff like that, but also a lot of more specific callouts and pop ups as you play through that tutorial, saying mm-hmm. like. Here's what this means. Here's what it means to be compromised. Here's why you are compromised right now. Here's why there's a white dot over yeah. this character's yeah. head. Here's, here's what you get by blending in, which mm-hmm. is a, a, a contextual action you can do. It sounds like uh, even though you had played quite a lot of Hitman 1, there were even a couple of things in that tutorial, that just the way they were more explicitly yeah, spelled out, just that very... were actually like new information. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so even if you played a lot of the first game, it might behoove you to check that stuff out. Yeah. Um... And so your your save game progress from the first game does not come right. in. You will have to play through all that stuff again if you want to get all the unlocks yeah. uh, that each mission has from the first game. But that's, you know. I mean, ostensibly, you're pulling that stuff in to play it again. Right. Otherwise, right. just keep playing Hitman 1, I suppose. Right. Like, like if you, yeah, yeah if, you, if you're not going to do the unlock or if you're not going to play those maps again, there's no point in having them there. So sure. I guess having to play them to get the unlocks is not a big deal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that uh, stuff comes pretty quickly. Yeah, and then they are selling. If you if you didn't buy Hitman One, uh, yes, they are, yes, they are selling the you, Hitman yeah. One content. It's uh, twenty bucks if you're a newcomer. If you buy the sixty dollar Hitman Two and you want that Hitman One stuff, and you do, mm-hmm. uh, pay the twenty bucks. You know, it's yeah. eighty bucks. It is a ton of content. Like that's a lot of game for yeah. that price. And then they have additional add-on content plans. Yeah, their DLC is part of their like yeah gold edition or, or whatever it ended up being. Um, let's talk about the maps. Yeah, uh, the the maps seem like you know like you know the the, the tools the rules are set in place, mm-hmm. but the maps are really the stars. Yeah, like like I said, the game lives and dies by the quality of of the maps, the locations, and the scenarios that they set up within those. Mm-hmm. The stuff here is just as ridiculous and over the top as in the first game. Cool. You know, first game you had a fashion show, you had this like seaside villa with like a bio lab underneath it, mm-hmm. um, like an exotic high tech 
hospital on the side of a mountain in Japan. Oh, right. Yeah. Ridiculous stuff. Yeah. Like this game, you know, you've got a, a you've got a like a, a motor speedway with like prototype cars racing and also like some kind of military technology fair taking place upstairs, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, there's a drug cartels compound out in the middle of a jungle where they are attempting to manufacture super cocaine. Ah, um, the most super of cocaine. Yeah. Uh, one, one cool thing they do actually is like they get away with including a map that is incredibly mundane, which it feels like an, a departure for this series. Yeah. Because everything is so over the top that mm -hmm. when they finally just give you a map that's just suburban USA. Like it's a really right. cool swerve. Actually. Which they've done in, in the kind of pre reboot Hitman. Yes, they, yes. They've had things along those lines. Right. But, right. but, but, the, but this, this first game in this kind of rebooted series was just so grandiose and outlandish. Yeah. That, that having this just kind of suburban, whatever, like something like, a little more rooted, cool, cool change of pace. Yeah. Um, and then the last map, which I won't get into too much. Uh, the series has always sort of trafficked in revenge fantasy from my perspective. Because just from a story perspective. By and large, by and large, your targets in these games are the overwhelmingly rich and powerful. Yeah. Like this game culminates hmm. with that. Like that it, it takes that theme and really runs with it and culminates in like a really over the top example of that sort of thing. Yeah, it seems uh, I, I I feel like the first game I went through it and played quite a lot of it, but never really paid too much attention to the story. Mm -hmm. It's not it seems like there's not maybe that much like core hitman story. Like obviously every, every little character has their own piece where they fit into the overall narrative as to like why they're, why they're your target and yeah. that sort of stuff. But generally it seemed like in the first game it was like, ah, this person's an operative of this thing. Mm -hmm. Like they're going about their business, but yeah. you know, they're, like they're also an operative of this thing. You got to kill them. Yeah. Uh, and, and they would kind of string it together with cutscenes. Is this, is this more of that? Uh, yes and no. Yes, in the sense that it does continue all of that, mm -hmm. but but it does such a better job of tying it all together and actually making it make sense. Okay, that I actually really care about the story and what's going to happen next. You know, presuming they make a, a third game. Cool. Um, you know, all that content is there if you if you have it. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. there's obviously if you buy this game and don't have it, you won't see the stuff. But you can watch all those cutscenes from the first game. Yeah. And going back in retrospect, you see where they were going with everything. Whereas at the time it was just like, it was one secret society after another. It was like yeah. spy agencies versus other spy agencies. It was rogue agents all over the place. Like it just like you were, and none of it was answered. Like mm -hmm. the first game just provided very little payoff. Yeah. To all those questions that just they seemed raised. like shadowy stuff for yes. the sake of yes. like, uh, we don't have to provide the answers because eh, you know, just right. it's, it's secret. It kind of it felt like watching the X Files or something where it was just more and more conspiracy and never any truth. Yeah. Um. But this game really runs with it and just starts filling in blanks pretty quickly mm. and makes all that stuff meaningful and ties it into what you're doing in mission a lot better. Cool. To the point that, like, major characters outside the missions suddenly start showing up in missions, and that actually felt jarring in a way. Oh, Because the wow. first game doesn't yeah. really do that. Right, yeah. First game, your in-mission targets are almost totally separate from what's happening outside of the missions. Mm -hmm. This game integrates that stuff a lot better. Um, and it really raises the stakes of what's going on. Uh, so you get a lot of payoff to what happened in the first game, but also it leaves like just as, just as it's sort of closing some doors, it's opening right. even bigger ones okay. for the future. Yeah. Like I'm weirdly invested <laughs> in the story, the ongoing story of Hitman at this point. That's cool. Yeah. That's uh that's uh that seems like it would be a difficult thing to pull off yeah. with, with kind of the nature of, of, of what they've built. Uh, it sounds like there's got, you know, new mission mechanics, but maybe, you know, you had some stuff that was maybe buggy along the way. Yeah, it. Uh, I mean, just uh, stepping back from that a little bit, like, I don't want to complain too much because this game's fantastic and mm. it is very worth playing, but, like, you do see some rougher edges around this thing than in the first game. Yeah. Um, for a variety of reasons. I mean, there's a little bit less map content here than there was. First game had six full locations and two pretty decent-sized training maps. Mm -hmm. This game has five full-size locations and one kind of half a map. Yeah. Um, so a little bit less there. Uh, yeah, some of some of the uh, scripted assassinations were a little bit buggy for me. I had some characters get stuck in kind of dialogue loops and not... Oh, weird. Because, you know, watching this game play out, it's almost like watching a stage production because mm -hmm. characters are moving into place, you know? Well, it's yeah. kind of the funny thing about this, the tutorial kind of is, is, like, the idea is that the tutorial, like, everyone on this fake boat you're trying to infiltrate... Yes is ostensibly working for the organization yeah, the, the and tutorial. allowing you to kill them. Yes. So they are literally actors. Characters literally are play acting in the tutorial, yeah. which is like a weird meta commentary on the whole thing. And there's but, a thing they, they, they put a bandage on the head of that guy, the cook. Yeah. 
to acknowledge like, hey, maybe this guy's gotten hit over the head a billion yeah. fucking times. Yeah. <laughs> it's a it's a ridiculous game and it knows it and, and that's part of why it's so much fun. But um, yeah, I guess I, and, and that's kind of outside of the story. Like the story yes. plays a pretty straight face. Yes. Actually, the whole thing plays it pretty straight yeah, faced it's, it's just the situations yes, are outlandish yes uh, the situations and also a lot of the ambient dialogue mm -hmm. uh characters just say the most goofball outlandish stuff for no particular reason and yeah. it ends up being hilarious but uh yeah it, a little bit buggy here and there in the missions you know usually uh, reloading a save game would cause whatever broke oh, to fix right. itself so it wasn't a huge problem but you know it did, did run into a little bit of that stuff mm -hmm. um production quality is just a little bit decreased here and there you know the, the cinematics are very kind of rudimentary compared to yeah it's they were like, nice nice full animated cg in the first game and more kind of still images with some sort of right motion graphic transition type stuff in this one yeah and, and, um, and this one is issued differently yeah uh, the previous game those maps rolled out one at a time yeah, episodically first episodic and, over the course of almost a year yeah this game is just here's the whole thing up front right uh, uh but i mean that's fine like i i enjoyed having it all at my fingertips yeah right off the bat so that was not a problem i think uh, th that's something that i i wonder how that would play to someone who hadn't touched hit. maybe there's now enough of it between hitman one and two that it, w it wouldn't be a, a thing but i think the the episodic nature of hitman one really worked or hitman uh there's already multiple hitmans i guess at this point um it really worked because it inspired you to really get more out of those levels mm -hmm. as opposed to just like plowing through them and I guess that's that is that kind of the mission stories are kind of designed because they, they have a, a thing now where it'll pop up and say, hey, here's some other mission stories we recommend you yeah. do in this level. Yeah. Does that feel like something that's there to kind of like remind people? Hey, yes. Hey, play yes. this. Play this again. And Don't. I mean, there is literal text in the game. There's literal tutorial text that says these missions are meant to be played multiple times. Like, yeah, they come out and say it. Mm -hmm. uh, and that does help lead you. I mean, you, you can see all those mission stories in the menu as you're doing the mission, so you don't yeah. have to wait till the end to see those others. Mm -hmm. um, but they do, absolutely, they lead you to that stuff. There's also a uh, kind of a top-level account level now. Mm. Like, you used to, I mean, you still level up on a per-map basis. Like, every map has its own kind of experience level. Yeah. But now there is a single level for your account above that that everything rolls up into. And what does that, does that do anything for you? It doesn't seem to do much. Like the, the, the map level is what gets you more gear, more guns and, and that's gear specifically for that map, ex right? Exploding rubber ducks. No, those can be used across the entire game. Mm. So that's okay. the biggest reason that it's worth going back and playing those maps from the first game again, because you're going to unlock a bunch of equipment that you can use across the whole game. Got it. Or, okay. Or both games actually. Um, uh, somehow. I, yeah. I think I had gotten my wires crossed a little bit and I, I was, assuming that like oh i need to unlock this gear for this map no but i will need to unlock the same gear for the next map it was interesting okay. it was interesting how they played it in the first game because there was an item that you unlocked on either i can't remember if it was colorado or japan it was either the last or the second to last map that yeah. was effectively it was called a, a disposable descrambler or something like that mm -hmm. basically a way to hack uh, key card locks oh which okay. you did not have throughout the entire yeah, game but once right. that final map came out you could unlock that and then go back to those old maps and just and that's pretty wild break the flow of the map you know like i i dove into hitman 2 without kind of replaying too much of the hitman 1 stuff in hitman 2 so i of course did not have that unlocked and there are a ton of key card doors in yeah. some of those levels that i'm like man there's just no way to get around these like yeah. i completely forgot that that yep. existed yeah that, that's that's the joy of playing this these games mm -hmm. over and over is is finding new yeah. ways to do old stuff um and yeah when you talk about uh the change in the format from episodic to just kind of here's the game. Mm -hmm. um, I was worried about that. I was worried like oh, I'm just going to blow through these missions and and not see not everything feel, there is to see. And, and then yeah. not feel like I need to go back because I've already seen the whole game as opposed to, yeah, you know, you had a month or more right. with each new map with the first game before you could see any more of it. Um, but it was almost the opposite. It was almost like I didn't want to move on to the next map mm -hmm. until I had rung everything out of the one I was on because you see you know, as you were pursuing one opportunity, you receive the threads of like three or four others and you yeah. ultimately you have to make a choice and just go down one to finish the mission. Right. But you see enough of the others that you almost like, want to. I want to go back in. Yeah. For me, it was, you know, doing uh, doing a thing in Miami that I had stumbled into and wasn't following the mission story for and wrapping it up, but in a relatively clumsy way. Mm. It's like you look at it and go, clearly there's a way to use this item with this item and this item right. to do this in a very stealthy way. Uh, and and so I, I ended up going back in and going, I'm not moving on until I see the way that this was right. meant to be carried out. Yeah, it's it's super satisfying. I mean, it, it, does, it, it does, does get a little mechanical because you basically end up forming a laundry list in your mind of all the stuff you want to do in a mission. Yeah. And... 
you start doing it faster and faster. The more you play a mission, the more you can kind of skip over all the exploration and just beeline to stuff. Right. But I actually think one of the smartest things they do is, um, you know, they've got this huge challenge system. It's not just assassinations. It's also discovering locations. It's uh, mm-hmm. doing 800 different things in each map. Um, the smart thing they do is that stuff unlocks regardless of the state of your save game. Like, like oh, it's, right. keeping, it's keeping mission unlock progress at a higher level than your kind of in mission yeah. status. So the minute you Meaning, complete one of them, it's yes. unlocked, period. Yes. You could fail right there and have to reload. It's still yes. done. And, and that also means, you know, if you really want to go this route, which I have on occasion, you can just <laughs> save scum it. Mm. You can say like, okay, I get, I get challenge credit for killing this guy five different ways. I can see a good way to get three of those right here in this room with him right now. Yeah. I'm going to make a hard save here. Okay. I'm yeah. going to get the headshot kill. Yeah. I'm going to reload. I'm going to get the poison kill. Okay. I'm going to reload. I'm going to shove him into this laser security grid. Yeah. And have him blow up. You know what I mean? Right. Like, yeah. it, it, it's a shortcut, but it feels really satisfying to kind of break the game and just exploit the mechanics. I was going to say, like does, that. That, does that seem like it's in the spirit of Hitman 2 being kind so. of like, you know, it is about you exploiting yeah. some of yes. these systems yeah. uh, and, and that, that don't feel like reality. No. They feel like... It feels like Hitman. Coded yes. video game it, systems. It, is, it very much knows it is a video game and it yeah. plays, plays to the strengths. Yeah. Um, so... You talk about the number of maps being, you know, maybe a, a little bit less. There is some multiplayer stuff yeah. here. Yeah, there there are a couple of kind of extra modes that they ginned up for this. There's there's yeah. Sniper Assassin, which basically puts you in kind of a stationary perch. Mm-hmm. It's on a new map, to their credit. Uh, it's, a, it's like a wedding kind yeah. of scenario. And, and an this estate. is the thing they put out back at, like, E3 time. Yeah, when I they guess if you pre-ordered, pre-orders, if you pre-ordered yeah. this game months ago, you've already played this. Okay. Um, I didn't realize that there was only you know, going to be one map for them. Maybe they'll change over time yeah there, there there are signs that they may iterate on this mm, stuff a little bit but okay. uh but it, it's interesting mm-hmm. you know it's not necessarily the thing you come to hitman for but you are tracking targets from afar through a scope you've got different types of ammo it uh, seemed like that it was like trying to and i haven't played it since you know the, the, they did that pre-order thing uh it seemed in a way that they were trying to apply the hitman concept of there are a lot of different ways to get the job done that don't necessarily involve you just putting a bullet in someone's head uh, and trying to have some of the kind of weird hitman like like Rube Goldberg kills a little bit. you know like yeah. oh you shoot the statue and it's going to do this yeah, and seems seem that way and uh, you get have you it know, fall over and yeah you're getting radio comms telling mm. you like oh target so and so is moving that way like oh you better hurry up the helicopter's on the way you know like the it, right right it feels hitman esque mm-hmm. but you know you don't have the freedom to really experiment the way that you do in the real game i feel like the, the i came away from that thinking you know if they made a hitman mobile game mm-hmm. this would be <laughs> Sure. A way to go. Yeah. It's like, it's kind of just, it's, it, it's a distilled hitman yeah. experience. With kind of limited still control. Kind of the, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's, I wonder, yeah. Uh. Yeah. And then there's uh there's ghost mode, which is literally labeled as a beta mm. in the interface. Right. Yeah. Uh, which is a head to head mode, kind of simultaneous. I mean, it is simultaneous, but you're both on your own version of the same map. Yeah. So essentially you can see the sort of ghost silhouette mm-hmm. kind of manifestation of the other player but you can't interact directly with any of the other characters in their world, except there is an item. There's a coin you can kind of flip Mm -hmm. to sort of distract other characters, but it's really just a race against time. Like you're each trying to carry out assassinations faster than the other person to score points, but playing Hitman fast and precisely because they also require you to do the kills while you're unseen. Yeah. Just not the way that I really want to play Hitman. It seems like a a mode that might be better suited for people who are, into i guess scoring really well yes. in the campaign yeah like what's getting the... those five stars getting the silent assassin yes and... like the people people who are way into suit only silent assassin runs yeah might be really into the ghost mode maybe mm-hmm. um for me like i just i want to play hitman a little more loosey-goosey than that thing allows you to do mm-hmm. uh so not a huge draw for me i mean it's cool that they're experimenting and trying some stuff it's and... a really neat idea yeah and, uh, and and again, it, it says beta right on it, so hopefully, and it only works on one map right now, so hopefully mm-hmm. they will uh, iterate on that thing, refine it, you know, yeah. maybe find more of a of a formula that works. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, I, I don't want to harp too much on there being kind of one less map or whatever. I mean, the maps that are here are huge. Like I should say, yeah, you know, by the time I got through the first uh, the first full location, Miami, I was like my head was spinning. 
mm-hmm. at the number of different things there are to do and just how, how big the layout is and how much there is to remember. I think a couple of the maps, I think my timer was like pushing three hours. Oh, wow. Because I did so much mm-hmm. the first time through. I just stopped caring about time as an aspect of my score. Yeah. I yeah. just said, like, I'm going to learn this thing as deeply as I can. Mm-hmm. Like, try to get the layout down in my head. Like, figure out what the characters do. Yeah. Figure out what makes this tick. And then you can go back and do faster mm-hmm. faster runs. There's a ton to do in those maps. Cool. So, so it being by the numbers, maybe a little bit reduced, not not a huge deal. Okay. And and what do you think of the package? Overall, it's it's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, if you yeah, if you if you really liked that last Hitman game, like it's a no brainer. Like get it. Like there's mm. there is no reason not to. And even if you didn't like the deal here, you know, like of, of the, the amount the... of stuff you can get for not much more than a regular full price game, yeah, uh, is hard to argue with. And it's it's a fantastic game. Like like I said, it takes a little bit of time to get into. Yeah, really. It's like it's a better version of Hitman One. Like Absolutely. Even like having that content in the updated engine with the kind of new like working mirrors yeah, and stuff like yeah, that. Like bunch, it's a bunch it's, of new features. It's cool that, that that is something that's doable, especially something that like, you know, I, I you know, it's, it's, it is what it is. You know, it, this thing was originally Hitman season one. Yes. And you thought like, Oh, well they'll do a season two and it'll all work together and all of other stuff. And then a lot of business things happened along the way that made that seem not possible mm-hmm. and strange. And now here we are. Like they've found a way to make that work. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like uh, other than the fact that it is technically a separate game, you're not paying any more than you would have if they had just continued on with the season, season right. approach. Right. Or it, it's, so. it seems like it imports into this in yeah. a way that, like, hey, if they make more Hitman after this, who knows? Maybe yeah. it will just exist as a, you know, update for this. That would be ideal. Or, like or this package, like it's, it's so tightly integrated at this point that if they just roll out a season three, right, in another year or so, that's fine with me. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, yeah. Whether whether you are experienced with the first game or not, it's very easy to recommend. And it, it seems like it's you know like I almost liken it to Forza the way you you talk about it in terms of like playing it one way and then gradually turning off assists yeah. as you yes. become more comfortable with the mechanics. Like that's very much a, oh I'm gonna turn make the driving more realistic. I'm gonna turn the the ABS down and, and all this other stuff. Like Hitman seems like it actually kind of does or or allows for that too. Absolutely. I mean it it. it draws you in because like oh it's sure is funny to throw a can of spaghetti sauce at that guy's head it yes and listen to him say something goofy as he falls to the ground Uh uh-huh but then it gets you yeah it gets your hooks in like you're there for the absurdity but then you actually start understanding the machinery underneath it all and right it is very satisfying to yeah to exploit that stuff and get really good at it that's how it happened for me with the first game yeah as someone who like has never really enjoyed the hitman games all that much yeah like this this one yeah this we Dan and I played through that first game pretty much exclusively on video for yeah. the majority of 2016, mm-hmm. you know, because, because we needed to cover it and because people liked the videos. Those were the primary reasons yeah. but toward the end of that process. Like it was like a light bulb went on one day of like, you know what? I want to keep playing this. Like yeah. there's more here than I thought. And I think that that's around halfway through the, the release schedule for those maps is when I was like, I need to play this. This yep. sounds incredible. Uh, yeah. And, and that first game was just, you know, like a revelatory in a yeah. way. It was just like, hey, you know, they, they, it seems like they finally figured out a way to make Hitman appeal to a wide audience. Absolutely. In terms of like, hey, there's, there's enough assistance here for you if you need it, yeah. but they didn't sacrifice the, the kind of upper end of, no. of that skill ceiling. Absolutely not. They've, they've hit on the right note of accessibility, of mechanics, of tone mm-hmm. and self awareness. Yeah. Like all those things have just come together in a, a really perfect way cool at this point yeah Uh, and this is and this is more of that and better yeah so that's kind of the beginning and end of it right uh and that said you know it sounds like the the, you know the the multiplayer modes maybe are are a missed opportunity yeah or or just not ready for prime time you know it's just not what i'm here for Mm -hmm. um you know what's here is really good it does like i said it does have those rough spots here and there that are very easy to look over Mm mm-hmm or to pass over because the core of this thing is so good. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it is noticeably a little bit, a little bit rougher yeah. than the first game. So talk to me about score. Uh, looking at a four out of five. Four out of five. For this one. All right. Yeah. Uh, that sounds, you know, inherently less surprising than, sure. than the first game. Yeah. But a very solid equivalent dose. Yeah. No, I of I, that. I, I have been having a, a, a quite a good time with yes. this. Yes. Um, and, and, you know, they, they, uh, We'll have to see over time. We can't ever make guarantees based on promises from the developer, but the first elusive target 
mm-hmm. is rolling out in a matter of days, and it's Sean Bean, which is a that's a fun a great celebrity get for yeah. a game like this. Yeah, that's that's a fun silly. Um, you know, they only had I think Gary Busey was the only kind of star right. target <clears throat> from the first game. So and then the, the elusive targets, I guess you know maybe we should just like quickly for people who don't. That's like a, it's a time limited mission right yeah so it'll kind of bring you back into maps like so it's 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 hey here's a map that we used for this story mode but here's yes. a, a reconfigured version of it and and is going to have this other target very lavishly produced in the first game i should say i mean there must have been i almost want to say like two dozen of those mm. eh, that maybe sounds a little high but there are a lot yeah of elusive targets and they're not repurposed or at least in the first game they were not repurposed character models from elsewhere in the game yeah totally brand new like Character models, routines, storylines, like they recorded new mission briefings. Mm-hmm. Like they feel like very valuable new story content. And yeah, they are like, I think in the first game they were like, you know, three days, maybe five days yeah. on the outside for a lot of them. You didn't have a lot of time to do them. And if you fail once, you were out. Like yeah. you get one shot to do it. Um, the Sean Bean one that's about to roll out is uh, going to be a two week window, which sounds amazingly generous. Yeah, by the standards of the first game. So I don't know if they'll all be like that for this one, or if that's just something for uh, like a launch period. Yeah. Like, hey, get in while this guy's here. Yeah, or, yeah. Um, and, and you know, we can't say if there will be as many of them as there were in the first game. Yeah, we just don't know. Uh, uh, but but this seems promising based on this first mm-hmm. one. Cool. Uh, and you know, like I, the, more nuts and bolt, bolt stuff we didn't get into here. I mean, there are you know, there's a mission editor. You can make your own contracts. Right. They're effectively endless mm-hmm. Hitman to be had if you really want to dig into you the user made levels. Search the community stuff and yeah. find that and pull yeah. that down. It's got all that stuff from the first game. I mean, yeah. it's really just a kind of a staggering amount of stuff to play. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, for the asking price. Yeah. All right. Well, there you have it. That's yep. Hitman 2. Thanks, Brad. Thank you. And thank you for watching and or listening. Uh, from all of us here at GiantBomb.com, have a fantastic day or night or day.